My name is Walter Kemp. I'm a forensic pathologist who has a strong interest in teaching medical students. This will be a brief presentation on the histologic dating of acute myocardial infarcts. If you have interest in pathology type questions, uh, the two websites there um, are, provide some. And also, if you have any interest in following me on Twitter, I post unknowns. There's my Twitter handle. Uh, my purpose of this information is education, primarily for medical students or pathology trainees to help them learn basic principles. Secondarily, anybody in medicine who wants to learn something about pathologic processes. And tertiary, if anybody in the lay public wants some more information on pathologic processes. So anybody who's interested in learning about pathology, if you do not fall into any of the above categories, please do not view the presentation. I will start with two multiple choice questions. Even if you don't know the answer, just try to think about the answer. I will provide the answers at the end. This is a teaching technique to give you a basis for what you are paying attention to during the lecture. And after each slide, I will pause my recording briefly and then continue. During my pause, please feel free to pause your playback so that you can study the slide in detail. So on this slide, where is the coagulum necrosis beginning in these two images? So there's early coagulum necrosis. You can see roughly where the areas are circled. You can see hyper-eosinophilia of the cardiac myocytes and some pycnosis or shrinkage of the nuclei. At the bottom, it showed an example of what fairly well-developed coagulum necrosis look like. So what they say is that 4 to 12 hours, you see beginning of coagulum necrosis. And at 12 to 24 hours, you see ongoing coagulum necrosis, pycnosis of nuclei, and eosinophilia of myocytes. So what do you see here? So in the top left, what there is is there's well-developed coagulum necrosis. You can see it outlined with the yellow arrow on the right side. Um, there is still some um, visible uh, faded uh, pycnotic nuclei at the black arrow is one, and there's an interstitial infiltrate of lymphocytes, or sorry, an in interstitial infiltrate of neutrophils, and you see that at the blue arrows. In the bottom right, you see some well-developed coagulum necrosis in basically the bottom half of the image, where you see a pronounced hyper of the cardiac myocytes, essentially loss of nuclei, although there are some that you can see that are very um, faded. Um, so at 12 to 24 hours, once again, you see ongoing coagulum necrosis, pycnosis of nuclei, and eosinophilia of myocytes. At one to three days, you see coagulum necrosis, loss of nuclei and striations, and interstitial infiltrate of neutrophils. As I'll mention at the end, this is something that you see there's, there's a, it's a spectrum of changes. It's not absolute. So this, these two, neither one of them fits perfectly for each of these, but just showing you the range. So what do you see here? So on the left, on the left side of the image is normal intact uh, myocytes, and on the right is coagulum necrosis with a prominent uh, neutrophilic infiltrate in between the dead myocytes, and you can still see numerous um, faded nuclei. Um, and then on the right, what you see is really well-developed coagulum necrosis and beginning breakdown of the uh, cardiac myocytes, a prominent infiltrate of neutrophils, and you see basically the neutrophils are dying. You see karyorectic debris, um, which is all the, uh, at the yellow arrows, you can see the little uh, dots of material, and that's just breaking down the neutrophils. So at one to three days, you see coagulum necrosis with loss of nuclei and striations and interstitial infiltrate of neutrophils, so on the left side, that's what we see, but you do see some preservation of some of the nuclei. Once again, just showing a kind of a spectrum. On the, at three to seven days, you see early disintegration of cardiac myocytes, dying neutrophils, and macrophages at the periphery. And one important point to remember about that is the periphery can be different than the anterior. So with any size of a myocardial infarct, you can see a variety of different changes throughout. The outer periphery can have changes that um, you don't necessarily see throughout the rest of it. Um, so just something to think about. So what do you see here? So on the left side, what we're seeing is basically the cardiac dead myocytes have all been cleaned up. 
Um, the neutrophils are basically gone, and what you see are macrophages that have come in and have engulfed everything. Um, what you can see within them is some a finely granular yellow pigment. Um, this is probably lipofusion from the dead cardiac myocytes, and they've engulfed lipofusion. There could also be some degree of hemosiderin within it. If there is some hemorrhage associated with the infarct, you'd have to kind of stain it with an iron stain to see for certain. And on the right, you can see macrophages. Um, so once again, at three to seven days, you see early disintegration of cardiac myocytes, dying neutrophils, and macrophages at the periphery. Here, all we see are macrophages. Whereas at seven to 10 days, well-developed phagocytosis and early development of granulation tissue. There's really in both these images no, I think, good granulation tissue. Um, so like I said, I put this right around, potentially around seven days, somewhere in between. Once again, it's a spectrum. What do you see here? So on the left side, this is actually a lower power view of the previous one. You can see the macrophages in there, but you can also see some degree of, of fibrosis. Um, a trichrome stain would bring that out, but you can see the kind of um, fibrinous, or sorry, not fibrinous, um, strand-like uh, material in between the cells. On the right side, I believe it's much better. You can see some inflammation. You can also see blood vessel formation, and then you can see fibrosis, um, the acellular pink material in between. Um, would stain with trichrome. So at 7 to 10 days, you see well-developed phagocytosis and early development of granulation tissue. At 10 to 14 days, you see well-developed granulation tissue, blood vessels, and collagen. So it's once again just showing a spectrum. So what do you see here? So what I want to do is just compare the cellularity. At 10 to 14 days, you have well-developed granulation tissue with blood vessels and collagen. At 2 to 8 weeks, the collagen deposition increases and the cellularity decreases. So if you look at the top left, there's a lot more cells than the bottom right. So the one on the bottom right would be older, but you can still see some blood vessels in there. You can see the pigment laden, likely the lipofusion laden macrophages, and there's still some cellularity to it. So what do you see here? So this one actually shows two ages of infarcts. The one at the bottom, uh, you see what I kind of consider as loose fibrosis. You can see some space, some pink, um, some blood vessels, some cells. And then at the top, you see much more dense uh, scarring, um, where you just see basically the pink, which would stain with trichrome, which is fibrosis, and not very many cells. So the bottom infarcted area is more recent than the top infarcted area. So remember, at two to eight weeks, you have increased collagen deposition and decreased cellularity. And at greater than two months, you see a dense collagenous scar, which is essentially what the top one would be. What do you see here? So what we see is basically a dense collagenous scar. Um, the right side is lower power. Uh, I'm sorry. The right side is a higher power, closer up. The left side is lower power. Um, and you can basically see just dense collagen, dense fibrosis. Uh, it's staying blue with trichrome. There's hardly any cellularity to it. So this would be something that you would see at greater than two months, a dense collagen scar. Okay, so first question uh, for the answer. So given the time frame of it, since it started three hours ago and two hours after the initial presentation, um, the, of the choices, the only thing you'd likely to see would be very early coagulative necrosis. With the second question, um, since he had the features of the myocardial infarct, and then two days later mentions the events to his wife, the troponin I is elevated, which will stay elevated for around a week. Um, given that and given the choices, um, he could have well-developed coagulative necrosis with a prominent neutrophilic infiltrate. It's beyond the time frame in which you'd um, expect just very early coagulative necrosis, and you shouldn't see the well-developed macrophage infiltrate uh, that early on. So of them, the best choice is B. So summary, you tell me. So this is a teaching technique called reflection. It makes you think about what you just read or saw. So what I'd like you to do, do is go through and think about what would be a few important points that would come from the lecture you just heard. And then the next slide will be what I would think are those. Okay, so in summary, 
If you see coagulant necrosis and no neutrophils, it's likely less than 24 hours. If you see coagulant necrosis and prominent neutrophils, it's around probably likely three days. If you see prominently macrophages, around six to seven days. If you see prominently granulation tissue, two weeks. And if you see only fibrous scar, greater than two months. So remember, there is a spectrum, not absolutes. Good test questions will acknowledge that, i.e. expecting you to identify an infarct as two days and not two weeks old is fair, but expecting you to identify an infarct as two days and not three days is unfair. Thank you.